genetic engineering. I want to explain to you how genetic engineering can be done using the example of producing human insulin in genetically engineered bacteria. There's an advantage to this, whereas previously diabetics would have to obtain their insulin from pigs. You don't get much insulin from one pig. Some people object to taking pig insulin and it doesn't quite work as well as human insulin would. So genetically engineering bacteria to produce human insulin solves all of those problems. Plentiful supply, no moral or religious objections, and it works far, far better than pig insulin would. In order to do this, you need to be able to take the insulin gene from a human cell and pop it into a bacteria. So the first step is to locate a fully functional working gene for insulin. All your cells of the body will contain this gene, but it doesn't mean it's actually working. The one place in the body where it definitely is working is inside the pancreas. So we obtain cells from the pancreas to complete this task. Once you've obtained some cells, you then have to extract the DNA. It's a very simple process. So you remove the DNA from the pancreatic cell. Now there's an awful lot of DNA inside one cell. There's about 30,000 genes and you only need the insulin gene. There's an awful lot of DNA that is actually non-functional or called junk DNA. So in order to proceed with this, we just have to locate the insulin gene. And we can do that by using some enzymes. These enzymes are technically called restriction enzymes. And these restriction enzymes will cut out the insulin gene. restriction enzymes. Now you just can't take the insulin gene and stick it into a bacteria you need some kind of vehicle to carry the gene into the bacteria otherwise the bacteria won't take it up. Fortunately scientists discovered long ago there are naturally occurring circular pieces of DNA which are called plasmids and bacteria rapidly take these plasmids up. So once the plasmid has been obtained you would also have to cut a piece out of the plasmid so that you can stick the insulin gene in. And the insulin gene should then stick straight into the plasmid. In order to make sure in order to make sure that the gene sticks in you then have to use another kind of enzyme to stick the gene into the plasmid. Once you've got the enzymes sticking the gene into the plasmid, the plasmid can now be taken up by the bacteria. You'd all have a lot of bacteria here and a lot of plasmids and it has about a 1% success rate but 1% of billions of bacteria is quite a lot. Now once the bacteria has the plasmid and the human insulin gene in, as the bacteria divides and copies its own DNA, it's going to copy the human DNA and at the same time make the protein from that human gene, in this case insulin. And as the bacteria grow they will continue to make this human insulin and they will secrete it. They will release it out of the bacteria into a solution. And this is what we'll be after. So inside this solution is the human insulin gene and it can be processed for human use. Just to clear up the point here, the bacteria are not going to be injected into the humans, but the insulin that they produce can be to control blood sugar. Just as a summary, you obtain a pancreatic cell with DNA that you know contains functional insulin gene. You need to cut the gene out using an enzyme. These enzymes are called restriction enzymes. You then have to insert the gene into a vehicle. In this case, it's called a plasmid, which is a circular piece of DNA. You stick the insulin gene in using enzymes and these plasmids will be taken up by bacteria. 
and once the bacteria is dividing it will make proteins including the protein from the human insulin gene and therefore human insulin will be released by the bacteria which can be obtained from the solution and injected into people who require insulin such as diabetics.